Hey, what is going on, Spurs Nation? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Bucking Spurs Film Room Live. I want you to pay attention to the clickers, all right? So the one on the bottom right now is saying that in the last 10 minutes of the show that I'm going to take your questions. So make sure that you drop them in the live chat below with the hashtag BSFR. That's for Film Room Live. Okay, so thank you guys for so much for tuning in today. We're going to be talking about the Spurs versus the Sacramento Kings on February 8th. Uh, if you look on the screen right now, I have the ba basketball reference stat sheet pulled up, and we're going to look at a few things in particular in this film room. We're not going to dissect the whole game. I'm not going to film film study the whole game, but <coughs> I did go back. Excuse me. Part of my cough. Like if you've been watching this whole time, you know that I've been coughing, um, <coughs> um, but I went back and looked at this game, and I wanted to see where this game got away from us, and it definitely got away from us here at the end of this third quarter. Um, if you look at the scoring uh, breakdown by quarter, they dropped 37 points on us in this game. There's been a lot of games this season where we gave up 35-plus points in a quarter, <coughs> 40 in a quarter, um, especially last year and this year. But anyways, this is where this game got away from us. And why am I doing Sacramento versus the Spurs right now? Well, I'm going to be doing a series of scouting report videos, just kind of me diving back into the last time that we played these eight teams that we're going to play when we go back to Orlando, just to kind of give us a better idea of what we need to do to come out with the W. What should we expect on the offensive end? What should we expect on the defensive side of the ball? Um, all of those things. Okay. So uh, I care. I still care. I know that, you know, there might be a chance that, you know, well, we already know that LaMarcus Aldridge is out. Uh, DeMar DeRozan, I would be surprised if he does play because of his contract situation, not because he doesn't want to play. I'm sure he wants to play, and we need him to play, um, as this film will show you as we go on through it. Uh, but even if we have, like, the second stringers on the floor for 80% of the game, you know, uh, if that happens, <coughs> we can still go in there and do some business. Um, we've never really seen what type of team will be if we give, you know, these young guys a lot of minutes and it might be good, but let's look into this film and let's see at what, let's see what we need to, uh, look at. All right. So first off, just going through the stat sheet on basketball reference. Obviously I told you that we're going to talk a little bit about the end of the second quarter, uh, and that showed a lot of things that we did well, all right? And then we're going to go into the third quarter, the end of the third quarter, and that's pretty much where the game separated from us, and we really couldn't come back after that. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to – I'm going to stop sharing. Okay, stop sharing this. And I'm going to share – let's get to the film. Okay, so let's talk about the end of the second quarter. All right, so end of the second quarter, um, as you can see – uh, the score is 39 to 44. Spurs are down. There's four minutes left. <clears throat> now, the Spurs do a lot of good here. The Spurs do a lot of good before the half. Um, let me just make sure I have the right window up. Here we go. Okay. So here we go. All right. So let's kind of zoom through through these. I'm going to try. Look, I listened to a lot of the comments that you guys put uh, in the last video that I did about making the screen bigger, making me smaller. And this is the point where I'm eventually going to disappear Okay, so I'm going to go uh, from from being there, not to being there. But anyways, um, thank you guys for subscribing. Before we start, before I start diving into this film, if you can please hit the subscribe button, the like button down below, um, the little notification bell so you can be notified whenever I drop new content. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Okay, so Spurs versus Kings, February 8th, 2020. Um, a lot of things that we did here in the second quarter were positives and actually ended us ended turning us to eventually getting a lead. Um, but we're in man to man. All right. I didn't see the Spurs really do anything too different from man to man defense. You know, we do go that double fist two three zone a lot. But against Sacramento, that's not really something that we did <coughs> in, in the first half. Um, we guarded them, I think, very well uh, in a in a man to man defense. All right. So. Right here, there's a switch here. Now, in a, in a little bit, I'm going to be talking about these defensive objectives, right? So if you look at the screen, defensive primary objectives, keep Buddy Heald off the three-point line, keep Harrison Barnes off the glass, and then don't let Nemanja Jelica, 
I think that's that's how you say his name. I'm not sure. If, I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name, but their big man right here for Sacramento is no joke, and he's just this big guy that no one's ever heard of, but he's super smart, <clears throat> and he plays this game with his head, not really with his body, but, I mean, he's very capable capable of doing a lot of things, but he, he outsmarts us, so we kind of let him outsmart us. Those are kind of our main goals for this game. Okay, so let's kind of keep going here. All right, so we, they create a switch. This happens a lot. The Spurs are switching a lot of uh, pick and rolls on defense, where, and especially with LaMarcus Aldridge. LaMarcus Aldridge took up a lot of these switches guarding guards, but we've talked about this in my last film room, how great he is at defending the rim. Well, we're going to miss that. <clears throat> but look at these rotations. I want you to look at these rotations. Actually, this clip was on my DeJounte Murray and Derek White film room. Um, flashbacks coming back to me right now because it's very hard to get in the paint when you have these two guys on the top of your screen out on the floor. We've talked about that before. Derek White does a good job of never fouling with his hands. Um, always throws his hip into defenders, which is a legal way to play defense, right? So um, DeJounte gets out in the passing lane and he's able to take this ball <coughs> and go all the way down the hoop with it. Um, except we don't score. That's right. We don't score. And I remember thinking, oh my God, that was, that was a, a blown opportunity. Cause if you look back into this game, uh, you know, we're down five points right now, but it's really just us trying to figure out what we're going to do. What are we going to do? Well, what's going to work? You know, I, I, I picked the second quarter in particular because, uh, I like to see what we're doing at the end of the second quarter. And then, you know, the teams go into halftime coaches go into halftime. They meet, they talk. You know, they make their adjustments at half and then to see what happens coming out in the, in the second half. Right. Um, so right here, we're doing a lot of really good things on the defensive end, trying to turn our defense into offense. Unfortunately, um, Derek White didn't have that great of a game. And I'm not talking about statistically. I'm talking about making uh, decision making. Right. And you all know that Derek White is is one of my favorite players. Um out of everybody right now in the whole league, not only on the Spurs, because I love the way he plays point guard. He's so savvy. He just knows um, what options are available and which options are not. But in this game, he made a couple plays like this and that you're going to see in a little bit when we get to the third quarter uh, where he kind of just makes a poor decision where I think there might have been a couple other options there. Anyways, so let's go back on D. <coughs> excuse me, and let's see what, what we're doing here. Again, man-to-man -man defense. Their big guy can shoot it. He can play. He can pump fake with the best of them. He's like a Euro. He's like a prototypical European player. You know who didn't do all that well or do all that much in this game is, is the player that Spurs um, Nation loves a lot, and that's um, Bogdanovich. He he did not have a good game for, for Sacramento. So I'm wondering if he's even going to be a problem uh, moving on to uh, Orlando. Again, um, I'm going to pause this really quick so I can change the ticker. just want to let you guys know in the last 10 minutes of the show, I will take your questions, drop them in the chat below uh, with the hashtag BSFR live, and I'll try to get to those. Thank you guys all for stopping by and watching, um, <coughs> hitting the subscribe button. Thank you guys. Um, all right, so let's keep this moving. Another pick and roll. We talked about this before. The Marcus Aldridge switches a lot of them. I wonder if we're going to do that with our bigs because this is either going to be Trey Lyles, right, if we're going small, or it's going to be Jakob if Jakob comes in and takes that spot. But I doubt it. I, I think the Spurs saw enough at the end of the season where, um, you know, <clears throat> I think they're going to want to go with Trey over Jakob right there at the end. Um, not that it really did well for him. For us, we didn't really win all that many games. If you saw my last film room, without LaMarcus Aldridge, we were 4-6 and six on the season. Uh, so we, we can still play around with options, I feel like. All right, so we're moving the ball around. Great, um, great contest, you know, here from Derek White. And again, that was great rotation. If you see that some of these defensive possessions are going very well for the Spurs, they were doing a great job of staying in front of people in the second quarter. Okay, um, so switch. On that pick and roll, we talked about that. LaMarcus does an all right job of funneling that player to the help. I'm sorry, to, to the paint. Look at Bryn Forbes right now on help side. Bryn Forbes reacts often. He reacts early, uh, getting from help side and really committing, showing commitment, and not even messing around, making everything rotate. So by Bryn Forbes doing this, um, he's showing LaMarcus Aldridge that he's got his back. He's not going to leave him alone on an island, and he's trusting his teammates that they're going to be able to 
go ahead and help and recover. Okay, so here we go again. Ball gets kicked out. DeMar, good job. Good job from Derek White. Contesting leads to a def uh, DeJounte Murray rebound. We talked about that in, my, <coughs> in that film room. These two guys on the floor a lot defensively is just a huge, a huge plus for the Spurs. Okay, so here we go. We're just getting out in transition, moving that ball around, trying to take a good shot in transition. This isn't a good shot. I think, you know, if DJ could have this one back, he probably kicks out to Bryn Forbes um, out there on the three-point line. He's waiting, uh, but he takes it. But look at look at uh, this guy that I talked about earlier, um, not wanting him to out outsmart us, right? Um, on my defensive primary objectives, <coughs> uh, Nemanja Jelica, he's very smart. Look, he knows his personnel. He knows DeJounte Murray's not a shooter, right? So he's going to close out, not even close out. Look at him just run right by DeJounte. He's just like, yeah, okay. So they come up with a rebound, one pass away from a bucket, right? One. <clears throat> there you go. So Spurs call timeout here because that's ridiculous. You have these three guys on the floor I'm talking about for the Spurs. Um, Derek White, DeJounte, and Bryn, and their big guy leaks out for a cherry pick and three. That's that's on the guards right there. That's one of the first jobs of a point guard or a guard is to get back on defense, right? Sorry, so let's get back to it. <coughs> Going back and forth. I'm having fun with this, guys. I'm having fun with this. Um, so right now, you know, we've seen a lot of the Spurs – uh, go up against a man-to-man -man defense in Sacramento. Uh, and we've also seen the Spurs in a man-to-man -man defense. So a lot of man-to-man -man in here. So we're going to have to trust our our help side rotations. We're going to have to trust our communication if we're going to be in a man-to-man. -man. We're going to need to stay in front of people. No. We'll see how well we do that going into Orlando. All right, but let's keep it moving. Now, let's see where we're at. Let's see where we're at. 39 to 46 Spurs are still, still down by five at the end of this second quarter. All right. So on offense, wasn't that hard for DeMar to get whatever he wants? I think that what we're going to see right now is a few possessions in a row of DeMar DeRozan just getting to the lane whenever he wants. Uh, and Luke Walton is a smart coach and he makes an adjustment in a little while. And you're, we're going to see it here in about a minute and a half, but I want to talk about this lineup, all right? So let's talk about LaMarcus Aldridge being the only big, but hey, what did Spurs Nation want a lot of this year? Derek White, DeJounte Murray on the, on the floor at the same time. Well, these guys are going to have to take shots, right? So Derek White does a good job of hitting this three. He did shoot pretty well towards the end of the season. Um, these guys are going to have to step up on that and being aggressive, uh, especially with LaMarcus Aldridge being out, they're going to have to take more shots. All right, so here we go again. Spurs are still in a man-to-man -man defense. Uh, I love the way DeJounte plays big. He has a huge, massive wingspan, and he's not afraid to use it. So here he comes down. He's guarding. Is that Darren Fox? Um, he's going to do a good job <clears throat> of getting back in the play here. Oh, no, oh, never mind. That's not that play. Anyways, um, let's see what happens here. A little pick and roll with DeMar DeRozan. Um, I don't want to pick on DeMar. There's a few times when I was watching this film where um, when DeMar DeRozan's guy is setting a screen on on the ball that usually spells for something good for the other team, meaning DeMar doesn't really communicate well off screens or maybe doesn't stick to what the situation is. That's just my bird's eye view of his defense but sometimes even when it's off ball screens and his guy setting like a back screen for some other guy to get open um demar has i don't know if he always consistently sticks to the game plan strategy on uh how to guard those things right because the spurs have in their scouting report a way to guard everything <clears throat> how they're going to guard handoffs how they're going to guard ball screens right? Who, and it's different for each player, right? So it's like, okay, well, if De'Aaron's Fox is coming off a ball screen, you know, you want to protect the rim, right? That's probably where he's going. But if Buddy Heald's coming off a ball screen, you need to leave him no space for him to shoot that ball, right? So it's different for everybody, but I mean, that scouter report is long. Um, so we're just kind of going through some of it. Okay. So this turns out for a bucket for Sacramento. Here comes San Antonio back on the other end. Let's see what they do here. All right. So DeJounte Murray, 
uh, being aggressive here. Uh, LaMarcus Aldridge really makes this play happen. I've talked about this play again in my other film room. I love how LaMarcus Aldridge um, creates space right here. He's bringing up um, Benjinga, or I don't know how to say his name, Nemanja. I'm sorry, man. He's a good player, <coughs> but I can't say his name. Um, anyways, he's fronting LaMarcus Aldridge. So LaMarcus Aldridge isn't going to fight that front, and he's going to go ahead and push him all the way up the block. Um, to create all that space on the backside for DeJounte. And DeJounte recognizes this. Now, on the top of your screen, these guys that are these other guys that are playing defense, um, Bogdanovich. Now, a lot of us want Bogdanovich in a Spurs uniform. And I like the idea, but let me tell you, you can't be doing things like this and just forgetting about who he's guarding and letting DeMar run right past him to get an easy dunk. For a basket right this is a nice play nice highlight nice find from DeJounte nice finish from DeMar DeRozan Bogdanovich totally didn't care about where DeMar DeRozan was anymore in this play uh it happens don't worry it, it happens Bogdan all right so <clears throat> let's keep it moving I don't want to stay on the second quarter too long because I do want to talk about this third quarter run that um the Kings go on that really put this game away but if you can see the Spurs are chipping back Right, So here at the end of this quarter, the Spurs were doing a lot of great things on defense. They had a couple missed opportunities from turning offense, uh, turning in their defense to offense. Um, but they're not having any trouble with um, they're not having any trouble with Sacramento and that when Sacramento's playing man to man. So if we go into Orlando and we're seeing Sacramento and man to man, um, that should open up a lot of things for DeJounte, for Lonnie Walker, for DeMar, hopefully if he plays um, to get to the rim <clears throat> because they don't play big. I mean, their, their big man is a very skilled big man. This guy right here, look at him, take it all the way to the, to the rim. But uh, he's not going to defend the rim, you know, with, like with the best of them. So we should be able to attack, maybe pull that big man out into space and get, get to the rim. But now this is something interesting, right? So in the last two minutes of the second quarter and the last two minutes of the third quarter, the Kings are going zone. They went zone for, for a little while to close out quarters. And that's something that's just something that we might want to look forward uh, look at going into Orlando is how are we going to play against their zone? Uh, Cause they did show to go, to go into it a few times. Okay. So let's keep it going right here. The Spurs are adjusting to it. There's <coughs> starting to figure it out. You know, we're coming down. This is this right here. looks like a man to man play, right? That the Spurs are in. There's no spacing. There's no filling gaps. Everyone's kind of cluttered, cluttered, right? These two guys are together. These two guys are together. They're probably running a man uh, offense, but they figure it out right here. Derek White gets it. He pushes DeMar to the corner uh, to get into open space. Um, DeMar, smart player. When you're going up against a zone, um, depends on what zone it is, but if it's a 2-3, this looks like an extended 2-3. These guys on the bottom are just matching up uh, a little bit. Again, smart player. Really, this guy connects this defense and puts it together because he's smart. He knows that he doesn't have to just stay in a spot, but he can go and match up with someone who's open, um, which he does here. Okay. So <clears throat> that forces us to a turnover. Um, we have to be patient again. It's just being ready for this zone when Sacramento gets into it. But when you go up against a two, three zone, you really want to target this free throw line here, but obviously they're taking that away. That's when you just use a couple skip passes. You get the ball somewhere else. You know, LaMarcus Aldridge puts a pin screen right here on Harrison Barnes, and maybe we can find DeJounte in the corner. Um, or DeJounte comes over to this corner. Look how much open space there is over here. So, because um, Harrison Barnes won't follow him over here, Bogdanovich would have to pick him up right on that zone rotation. So, we turn it over. You know, we get back in transition, do a good job in transition defense. And that's something that's going to be crucial going into this game against Sacramento. This is a team that wants to play fast. And I think the Spurs did a good job of slowing them down, to be honest. But that's because we had a Lamarcus Aldridge and we have the luxury of slowing things down on the offensive end when Lamarcus Aldridge is, is in the game. But when Lamarcus Aldridge is not in the game, then we we need to speed things up. But who's better at playing fast, them or us? Statistically, it's us. I wrote it down somewhere. Um, it's on the basketball reference 
reference page. We we were, you know, if we're comparing the San Antonio Spurs to Sacramento on a season statistical comparison, we dominated them like in almost every category. The only thing they were better at than us is defense, but not that much. You know, offensive rating, we had the edge over Sacramento. Points per game, we had the edge over Sacramento. Uh, pace, we had the edge over Sacramento. So we're we're faster. We're, we play faster. Excuse me. We play a lot faster than Sacramento, but they – they play better defense than we do, and that's that's not too hard to 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 grasp. Okay, um, guys, if you're watching this video, thank you guys so much. Please hit the subscribe button down below. Hit the like button as well, the little notification bell to be notified when uh, we do more content for you. And this film room is brought to you by Bucking Spurs, powered by ProjectSpurs.com. You can find me at RobTheRojoJr.com. Let's keep it moving. So now that this that we know that. Sacramento is going zone in these last two minutes. All right. So when you're watching the Spurs play Sacramento, if you get to watch them play, I don't know if they're going to be televised or not, but when you see the highlights, if it's in the last two minutes of a quarter, Luke Walton likes to go into this zone look. So the Spurs didn't adjust lineup wise. They didn't make any substitutions. They didn't make any timeouts um, because when you go up against a zone, <coughs> you want kind of two skill sets and a player on the floor. You want someone who can shoot the ball and you want players who can offensively go out and get the rebound because in a zone, you give up a lot of offensive rebounds. All right. So, um, and you need players to catch and shoot and be able to, to make plays like that. So DeJounte catches the ball, tries to take him one-on-one, -on -one, um, ends up finding a good look here in Derek white. But what did we talk about earlier? If these two guys are going to be on the floor, they have to become shooters. They have to take shots, which they do here. And, you know, to give them credit, they shoot them with confidence. Derek White misses that one. Um, but DeJounte is going to take this one in the corner and he's going to stroke it. And actually, he shot statistically his best three point shot is from the right corner, if I'm not mistaken. It was in either the left or the right. And I'm pretty sure he took more attempts over here on the right side this season. So um, that's a shot that we like, but we have to shoot it with confidence. Hey, look, this is the thumbnail. That's where I got the thumbnail photo. Y'all, y'all seen it. Y'all clicked on it. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching. All right, so Spurs are going to stay in a man-to-man -man set. Okay, now let's see. Um, what did we talk about earlier? LaMarcus Aldridge was switching all pick and rolls. Um, he does his job here. DeJounte kind of doesn't, but ends up causing a turnover anyway. So we're off and running. Defense to offense is where we have to live. If we're going with DeJounte Murray and we're going with Derek White on the floor together, which we did you know, in this lineup. Why? Because... Sacramento has <coughs> Darren Fox, Bogdanovich, Harrison Barnes is, is a very smart, heady player. Um, sometimes they have Buddy Heald in there with them right as well. Um, so they need the perimeter defense against these guys. And this is where we do a good job of actually turning this into a bucket. And I'm telling you, the Spurs did a lot of good things right. Uh, uh, a lot of things right here in this second quarter. I'm going to fast forward it. Uh, this possession... I'm gonna zoom through it so you're gonna see it go real fast on your screen but um it's another example here we go this is where i'm gonna pause it right so um right here lamarcus aldridge switched on the ball screen right we're switching all ball screens with lamarcus aldridge why i don't know um i don't like lamarcus aldridge guarding um perimeter players he does a good job of funneling them into help and Bryn Forbes always does a good job i think they probably gave that responsibility to Bryn Forbes they're like hey Bryn Every time that LaMarcus Aldridge is involved in a pick and roll, they were going to switch, and then that guard is going to try to beat him off the dribble. LaMarcus Aldridge already knows that. He's waiting to play um, behind the ball and try to make a block, you know, maybe at the rim or something on these guys, but there has to be help side. I, I feel like they gave that job to Bryn Forbes because it's always Bryn Forbes in the right spot. Look at this. Never leaves LaMarcus Aldridge on an island. He sees him that he's going to about to get beat back door, takes off right away, says like, nah. uh not on my big man, right? So we do a good job of rotating over. DeJounte gets a hand on the ball, and we're still playing defense here. So great possession again when we're in a man-to-man -man set versus the Sacramento Kings. DeJounte getting to the rim. All right, here we go again. On the out-of-bounds play, let's see what they run. I like out-of-bounds plays. Uh, Shout-out to Steven Garcia. Uh, he's our uh, head assistant basketball coach. He does our out-of-bounds plays for our high school team. Always makes these awesome plays. Anyways, so we got... Nothing special, um, but we do have DeJounte Murray guarding a, 
a big again he's smart he takes he's he, this guy honestly plays like Derek white in his mind um he's just too smart to mess up he catches he sees Dejounte giving him the lane funneling him high so he takes the contact and just takes a shot maybe he should kick out to one of these really awesome shooters that he has out here and Harrison Bar Barnes shot the ball well Bogdanovich is obviously his I think one of his best skills in the NBA is catching and shooting I think in the world of FIBA basketball Bogdanovich is a monster we saw that this summer I don't know if I mean that squad was was sick um but you know that's a bad shot but we'll take it let's get the rebound and let's go so another great defensive possession by the San Antonio Spurs when we're in a man-to-man -man set all right so um, let me see if I get them out, this screen, this little ticker thing off. Um, there's 16 seconds left. Just want to point that out. Down by one. Uh, we fought back. We were down, I think, what, seven or eight earlier in this quarter. Um, Mark Aldridge gets called for a goaltending here, so he doesn't get this bucket. Uh, actually, I think we end up committing a dumb foul here. Yeah, Trey Lyles makes a foul, puts them at the free throw line. Uh, so they get an easy, um, a couple easy buckets here going into halftime. And that's, <coughs> that's pretty much the second quarter. All right. So thank you guys for hanging out with me right now. We're not done. We're not done. We're about to go into the third quarter because we lost this game. Actually, we got blown out in this game. And what happened right now? You're probably asking yourself, um, wow, the, the Spurs are playing very well on the defensive side of the ball. That got, that's got to mean good things. And it's, and yeah, um, but this is this game is four quarters. You don't just play one good quarter and you win. Um, so the Spurs do a good job of cutting this lead down. And in the third quarter, they actually take the lead. Uh, uh, so they take the lead in the third. And then we're going to talk about where we lost this game. The 16-2 to run that ends the third quarter. Um, and that way we can recognize what we did wrong. And hopefully we can try to limit that going into Orlando. Um, so thank you guys. Let me go ahead and check this screen out and pull up the third quarter clip that I have here ready for us. Okay, here we go. <coughs> now, uh, again, thank you guys for tuning in. I will be taking some questions if there are any um, at the end of the show. Thank you guys for subscribing. Thank you guys for liking and watching live. Make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. Make sure you hit the like button and the notification bell as well so you can be notified. Um, this is the first of this is the first scouting report for for uh, the Spurs going back into Orlando. I would like to do one on every team. So if you guys hang out with me, I'll do them. Uh, no problem. I love doing this stuff. All right. So here we go. Third quarter. This is where things get interesting. Now we pulled up the basketball reference shot uh, sheet earlier. The Sacramento Kings scored thirty seven. In this quarter, 16 in the last few minutes of this game. Okay, now why? What did Sacramento do particularly well in this game that forced the Spurs to uh, crumble and really just never even have a shot later in this game? The Spurs end up putting their, you know, Quindary Weatherspoon and Drew Ebanks in this game, actually, with about three minutes left. <laughs> okay, so that just goes to show you what happened, how far this game went. Okay, so right now, um, let me get this ticker off the screen. It's 76 to 72. We're going to pick up with four minutes left at the end of the third quarter. Say, Rob, why are you skipping the whole quarter? Look, they came back. You know, they were down 49 to 51 at halftime or 52 at halftime. And now they have the lead. What happened? How did they get that lead? Well, use your imagination. You already, you already saw what they did well in the second quarter. You know, they turned a lot of defense into offense. Their man to man defense was on point. Their help rotations were on point. They were keeping people out of the paint. We talked about our defensive primary objectives. I think we did a good job in that second quarter of not letting Nemanja Jelica outsmart us because he could have on plenty of occasions, right? But what are the other things that we have to do? It's to keep Harrison Barnes off the glass uh, because he provides second chance opportunities for for the guys to get a, a bucket, right? Um, and then keep Buddy Heald off the three-point line. I put that one first because, honestly, that is the one that scares me the most. I think if we can do a good job of everybody being on the same page, 
of knowing that when Buddy Heald has the ball on the three-point line, everybody, whoever is closest, go out and contest and chase him off that line. We got to we got to be pretending because, hey, I want to win this game. I want to go into Sacramento and I want to win this game. I'm not just going to roll over. No, I'm trying to figure out ways that we can be successful. And I think that, you know, first off, we need to take away their number one weapon. And to me, that's that's Buddy Heel. It's not Harrison Barnes. It's not De'Aaron Fox. It's not Naman, Namanja Jellica. It's not any of those guys. It's Buddy Heald. So how do we keep Buddy Heald in check? And that's that's by trying to keep him as cold as possible because he's a guy you're going to see just that can just light it up. He's a guy that can hit three or four in a row and just bury you. Um, all right, so let's kind of go through this a little bit more. Again, if you're watching, thank you for subscribing. I appreciate you all doing that. I get the little notification things here on, on my end. So thank you so much. I appreciate you all so much. All right, so in this third quarter, we have a lead. Um and let's see what we do with it here. Okay, so what? All right, so we're going to pick up from here on the offensive side of the – oh, oh, never mind. I'm, I'm playing the next clip and the previous clip in my uh, on my screen. Sorry. Here we go. All right, so on offense, look what we're seeing. We're seeing um, Sacramento realize that this zone worked pretty well for the Spurs. I'm sorry, for Sacramento. Here, let me blow up the screen for you guys. Sorry about that. <coughs> If you guys, if you guys catch me leaving the screen small um, of the gameplay, <coughs> go ahead and drop a comment in there below. Uh, appreciate that. Okay, so the Spurs in the third quarter had to deal with Sacramento in this zone. I think Sacramento went into halftime thinking, "Hey, you know, how, I think the coaches maybe got together and they were like, hey, how do you think this zone worked? Do y'all like what you saw?'" If I was a coach on the Sacramento Kings, I'm saying, hell yeah. We caused like a turnover. We caused DeJounte and Derek White to shoot three three pointers between them two. Uh, DeMar DeRozan really only had one look. And that was the main reason for Sacramento going into that zone. Because I don't know if you remember, but DeMar DeRozan was getting into the paint whenever he wanted. So if Sacramento goes man to man and DeMar's in the game, mm-mm. Nope. All right, but let's see what the Spurs did now uh, with this lineup. Right now, we have Trey Lyles, who's the better three-point shooter in the game. We have Derek White, Lonnie Walker, who's a great three-point shooter, and Bryn Forbes, who's a great three-point shooter in the game. All right, so what did we talk about earlier? We want guys who can get after rebounds, and we want guys who can shoot the ball, right, when we're going up against a zone. Okay, so um, Lonnie Walker... I went to go see here real quick, little little story really quick. I went to go see Lonnie Walker in the summer league last year against Toronto. That was the game where he scored 34 points in the game. But let me tell you what, he had 27 at half. What happened in that second half? Let me tell you what happened. The, the Toronto Raptors summer league team went zone and Lonnie Walker got shut down. Lonnie Walker still learning. I think he, he has the tools to be effective against his zone, but he still needs to learn how to put them together and to be consistent with those opportunities because here's a few of them and um, <laughs> there's going to be a trend here okay so Lonnie Walker catches this ball in space that should easily be a catch and pull right for Lonnie Walker plenty of space doesn't need to attack the gap but look at all the space that Lonnie Walker sees but zones are made to keep you out of the paint because here comes Lonnie Walker look how many guys do you see collapsing on that why? Because they're all there in a zone just waiting. They're not playing man-to-man. -man. Harrison Barnes isn't guarding this guy. You know, Kojo, Corey Joseph, shout out to Corey Joseph. Um, uh, He does a good job of just showing help and then leaving. But Lonnie Walker takes kind of a force shot here. Against his zone, if you're taking wild shots like this, you're doing something wrong. You should be taking easy shots. And as, against a zone, you should be passing that ball skip passes, pass it from this side to this side, skip it over here, hit the short corner or the dunker spot, as they say in the NBA, or hit the guy that's going to be posting at the free throw line. That's how you beat a zone, not by doing this. <clears throat> okay, so that's a maybe ill-advised play from Lonnie Walker that's going to end up to the Kings being in transition. Corey Joseph slows things down, and Harrison Barnes is the guy that they're going to go to in this third quarter that kind of – gets us off of our game. They they look to him often here in this third. So right now he's being guarded by Lonnie Walker. Lonnie Walker is posting up a front, which means that he needs help. 
You know, if you're going to be fronting on defense, you're trusting that your guys here on the backside are going to be able to help you when this lob pass comes all the way through. Hopefully Derek White should be already rotated to double team, right? But here we go. We're going to let him play. One-on-one, -on -one, Harrison Barnes is a vet. They're going to repost. So they have no confidence that Lonnie Walker can guard Harrison Barnes. <coughs> Good help side. We talked about it earlier, making sure that your guys are on the help side. But he does get called with a goaltending because the ball does come off the rim, off the backboard, I guess. Yeah. So a little bit late, a little bit late, but that's the idea. Um, but it's still two points for Harrison Barnes and for the Kings. So here we go. I think right now, Timmy knows something's going on here. Something's going on. Okay. So things are about to change in this game. That's what's happening. All right. So. Let's come down. Let's look at what we do here on offense. We're almost done here. We're not going to stay on here for too long, but let's kind of find out what happens. So last play, what happened on offense? Lonnie Walker took a bad shot, led to two points for the Sacramento Kings. Now on this play, we're getting called for a moving screen here on Kojo, which is about right. If you look at it, <laughs> everyone's got LaMarcus is like, what? Pop is like, are you kidding me? But Corey Joseph is like, I know what's up. <laughs> I know how this goes. And, and look at LaMarcus just kind of fall into, into Kojo. So, yeah, moving screen. So, two missed opportunities. And on this one, they go to Harrison Barnes again. So, we're going to see the Sacramento Kings try to post us up with Harrison Barnes. Uh, when we go to Orlando, we might throw a couple of different pe people at him. I wanted to go through this whole game. <clears throat> I wanted to go through this whole game think of counting how many people guarded Harrison Barnes. And that's why he's he's on my uh, defensive primary objectives is keeping him off the glass. But really, it's keeping him in check. I don't think Harrison Barnes can beat you, can beat a team. He's not that good. Can Buddy Hill do it? Yeah, um, he can get hot. Can any of these other guys do it? I don't really think so. But the main thorn in your side is going to be Buddy. Uh, I'm sorry, Harrison Barnes. So we need to keep him from being a effective, not really keep him off, you know, the scoring sheet, but making sure he's not getting offensive rebounds, make sure he's not finding, you know, he's, he's not getting eight assists in a game or something like that. All right. So let's get back to it. Harrison Barnes again, this time he's guarded by Trey Lyles and Trey Lyles does a great job. This is a much better matchup to me. If I'm San Antonio Spurs, this is my matchup, my key matchup that I want to put together. I want Trey Lyles to be guarding um Harrison Barnes as much as possible I think Trey Lyles does a good job of here staying in front not falling for any fakes and contesting a shot you know what I mean look that's out of all the people that we've seen I've seen Derek White guard Harrison Barnes in this game I've seen Lonnie Walker um a couple people but Trey Lyles does a great job and that means that if Trey Lyles is going to guard him well who's going to guard you know Nemanja Ben Ben Jellica Nemanja Jellica who's going to guard him it's got to be Jakob or Drew Ebanks, <coughs> right? So, excuse me. Um, so, okay, so let's keep it moving. Great defensive possession. Um, now, this is the two. When I say the Spurs, uh, <laughs> sorry, the Kings ended this quarter on a 16-2 to two run and just blew us out of the water here in the end of this third quarter. Well, this is the two points, and it's a fantastic two points nonetheless. We saw that last play by Lonnie Walker where he took that lane to the basket and kind of forced it. Well, Lonnie Walker caught this ball knowing that I am not going to put it on the floor. I'm not going to mess around. I'm just going to go up and put it in the hole. Didn't No dribbles necessary. So this was an awesome dunk. Now, this is exactly what I'm talking about. How do we beat a zone? We talked about it earlier. You put your players in spots, open spots where their defense is. So Lonnie Walker just did a good job of running the floor and getting to an open spot, you know? And then as soon as he caught this ball, he already knew he want what he wanted to do with it and knew that there was no one there. Great play by Lonnie Walker highlight, probably one of the highlights of his, of his season. He had a really, a lot of really good dunks, but that was a good one. Okay. So 16 to two run, right? That's two. All right, here we go. Next thing we know on defense we're giving up lanes to the basket and one for Kent Bazemore. That one goes on Bryn Forbes. Let's see who should have been in his help. 
Yeah, that's just a bad closeout. Bryn Forbes got caught here on this little jab step right here from Bazemore. You know, if you're if you're someone who plays basketball, you don't need to do a crossover and two in and outs and a behind the back step back to get open. Look at look what Ken Bazemore does. He just catches, squares up, boom, gives a little fake, just a little fake, gets Bryn Forbes just on the step, and that's all you need. Get to the rim. All right, so there's two points there for Sacramento. Good highlight play by Lonnie Walker. We've seen that a few times. I know I'm going through this fast. I know it's moving fast for you right now. I'm, I'm fasting. I'm moving forward. Okay, so what do the Spurs do next to answer this? The Spurs, this is a, an important possession, right? We've only had one really good possession uh, in the last three, right? And that's where Lonnie Walker got that dunk. The previous two possessions were a foul and a missed bucket. Okay, so on this possession, earlier I talked about Derek White being a little bit uh, – uh, you know, making not the best decision on offense on this play. There's six seconds left on the shot clock at this point, and the Spurs are up by two. Two minutes left. <laughs> what happens? Well, we're forced into a bad shot here by Derek White. Uh, shot clock violation. Another missed opportunity. So if you can, if you're counting now, our last four possessions did not go that well in this third quarter. And we only got one bucket. Okay, so here we go back on defense. We've made a couple adjustments. Patty Mills is in the game. Uh, also, Rudy's now in the game if, that you've noticed. Um, we're staying in our man-to-man -man set, which went so well for us in the second quarter, right? <clears throat> so now, again, Harrison Barnes on the block. How many possessions is that in a row? Three or four possessions, right? And Rudy Gay... I'm sorry, but he looks at Rudy Gay and he says, no, I got this one. Doesn't even pass it out. Just go ahead and goes to work on Rudy Gay. Puts a little drop step, brings him towards the middle. I mean, that's textbook. That's that's textbook from Harrison Barnes. I mean, I, I don't want to blame this on Rudy Gay because Rudy Gay does a good job of staying in front. Um, that's just a good move by Harrison Barnes, and there's no help there. That's a good move, so... Can't blame Harrison Barnes or blame Rudy for that one. That's just good. But if you're keeping score, let's look at the score now. It's 78-78. So the Spurs had a lead. We talked about the end of the second quarter where they were fighting back, fighting back. And we didn't watch the beginning of the third quarter, but that's where they got their little lead. Well, there's no lead anymore. Okay, so Spurs, each possession right now is crucial because we're 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 not playing with any momentum at all. No one's hot. No one's getting constant shots. So what do we do? When all this fails, when the Spurs have nothing else to back to back themselves up on, they go to LaMarcus Aldridge. LaMarcus Aldridge tries to go to work. We need a bucket from him. He kicks out. So Sacramento's double teaming. <clears throat> I wanted to talk about this, but LaMarcus Aldridge isn't in the game. So who knows if we're going to see a double team out of Sacramento. But just to show you what happens, Rudy Gay does a good job of noticing that and tries to get an open spot. I think LaMarcus needed to figure out a way to get Rudy the ball here, but kicks out to an open Lonnie Walker. We love this shot from Lonnie Walker. Love it. Unfortunately, doesn't go in. So more momentum, more momentum for Sacramento. So here they come down in transition. Their big man is bringing up the ball. That's what we need in the modern NBA. I think that's why Lucas Simonic has huge potential. Um, so he's bringing up the ball. We're doing a good job of picking him up. All right, so let's see what happens. All right, so here we go. Buddy healed. Primary objective number one on your screen. Keep Buddy healed off the three-point line, and this is where we lose track of stuff, right? Because Buddy healed just gets hot. Poor Rudy Gay, man. Rudy Gay gets gets you know worked on on the block. And then, you know, he gets caught up on this switch. I don't like switching, man. I don't know. I, I wish there was a way that we didn't have to switch so many pick and rolls because um, Buddy Heald's a guy that can take advantage of that and really make you pay. I mean, look where he's standing. He's three feet inside from the – or five feet inside from the logo, right? So he pulls this cash, right? So I don't know. The Spurs haven't scored since Lonnie Walker had that dunk. Uh They've gotten three or four buckets in a row, and now they have the lead and all the momentum in this game. 
So another possession. Here we go. Pick and roll with Derek White. Usually this is this ends up good for San Antonio. Oh, I think he gets uh, blocked here. Again, that Nemjenga guy. He's not gonna Nemanja Jelica. I'm sorry if I keep I keep blowing his name. I'm so sorry. I keep messing up his name. All right. So my bad. Nemanja Jelica, I think he's a great player. He's he's putting us to work. He's not going to beat us with his body. He's going to beat us with his mind. It's just a good, smart block. That's a kind of an ill-advised take from Derek White. If you look at him right here, he kind of knows it, puts his head down, and then just goes and picks up ball. But anyways, that's a missed opportunity. We need a bucket. We're giving up this lead, and we're giving up all the momentum. So here we go. When Buddy Heald gets hot, he gets hot. So they go to him again. Patty Mills does a good job of trying to make it difficult. Um, but Buddy Hill, did y'all see him in that three-point contest? He's good. Um, so Buddy Hill gets all the way into the paint. Lonnie Walker has to leave. I don't know if that's Lonnie Walker's help. I mean, it's it's kind of – I think it would come down to personnel. If you wanted Rudy Gay giving up help – I'm sorry, giving up a shot to Harrison Barnes for help, or would you rather – in other words – who would you rather take this shot if you're the Spurs? I say Harrison Barnes because Kent Bazemore is a better shooter. So um, anyways, bang, right? So here they go. They're going on this run that we talked about, and they're stretching this thing out. Uh, Spurs don't call a timeout. They let him play through it. On the offensive side of the floor, we go to LaMarcus Aldridge, and he turns it over. So nothing good on the offensive side of the ball for the San Antonio Spurs at the end of this third quarter. Um. Now, to be fair to Sacramento, they're going man here. I think they switched it up last possession, but really they haven't need they haven't had the need to uh, play a lot of half court defense. They've been getting a lot of taking advantage of our opportunities. Um, but turnover from Lamarcus Aldridge leads to a wide open three or sorry, a step back three pointer from Buddy Hield, and Buddy Hield's hit three threes in the span of like a minute and a half, right? So we talked about that, keeping Buddy Heald off the line. And this is where this game is slipping away, <coughs> slipping away from us. All right, so here we go again. We're trying to go into LaMarcus Aldridge because he's our rock. They do a good job of keeping us at bay. Lonnie Walker takes another three and misses it. Again, Lonnie Walker just needs to hit these shots. These are big shots. We need these shots because the game momentum is switching. They're starting to pick it up. The home crowd is starting to get into it. You know, they're starting to believe that they're better than us. And what we need to do is the way to silence all that is to get a bucket. And so we, we missed a couple opportunities here, but, um, buddy heel notices that there's only 10 seconds left. He's going to take the last shot. Let's see how they do a nice pick and roll here. And then a step back with LaMarcus Aldridge in his face. Corey Joseph sneaks up and gets the rebound and puts that in right at the end of this quarter um, and gets that to go. So if you're keeping track, you know, we started the half uh, down by two or three points. Mid third quarter, we had a lead. We we're doing things well. Um, our defense wasn't the problem here. Our defense was actually doing pretty well. But when we started taking bad shots, when we started taking bad shots, that's when everything went to crap for San Antonio and Sacramento was able to get that ball and just go down and, and sink all these threes. They must've hit what? One, two, three, three or four threes in the last minute or two of, of this quarter. And now we're down by nine points. Well, in just to let you guys know really quick. And put the banner back up here. I'm about to end this film room. So uh, I will be taking some of y'all's questions. Uh, you can put the hashtag BSFR live. And that way I know that it's a question and not just a comment. But um, in the fourth quarter, we're not really going to touch on it too much. But in the fourth quarter, we did a good job. DeMar DeRozan was fighting back, trying to get some buckets. But we just could not close this gap. And this nine-point lead <coughs> actually blows up to about... 14 and we just really can't close that gap in the fourth quarter uh three minutes to go we're down by 14 or 12 or 15 but it's staying there it's just we just could not figure it out to close that lead and we end up putting in our bench in the game towards the end of the game just three minutes i think three minutes in that fourth quarter quindary 
uh, Drew Eubanks, those guys were in the game. So um, Pop had seen enough. He knew that the tides were were not going to turn. Um, so what do we need to do? What what can we learn from this game going into Orlando? Um, my primary objectives, I had them up on the on the on the screen here. Buddy Heald is is the guy that we need to keep in check. You saw at the end of this quarter how he can just swing the game, right? We can do our best defensive job all game long, but he has the capability of just hitting long three balls and just clutch and in your face. Um, actually, he hits the dagger in the game. It's it's like four minutes left in the fourth quarter, and someone contests the crap out of his shot. I mean, I don't know if he even saw the rim, um, but he knocks it down. But he holds a monster. Okay, so um, we need to keep Harrison Barnes off the glass. We need to try to limit his eff effectiveness. We need to keep their big guy um, uncomfortable. I feel like. Jakob or Drew, whoever is going to be guarding Nemanja, uh, Nemanja needs to understand that he's a smart player. He might try to get you with a couple fouls. Um, he might try to get you with some pump fakes and pass fakes and and whatnot, or try to leak out for a for a cherry picking <laughs> basket. You know, he's just a smart player, and we need to make him uncomfortable. And, and then I think we're okay because <clears throat> in this game, Darren Fox wasn't much of a problem. Bogdanovich wasn't much of a problem. Uh, we saw a lot of DeJounte Murray and a lot of Derek White together on the floor. Um, so, yeah. Um, all right. So I'm going to take a question here. It's by Sean Kelly on YouTube. Thank you for the question. Uh, live stream during, after, during or after upcoming games for OOC. Okay. So OOC, uh, the watch parties for the Spurs are going to be uh, – for every game, we're going to do those during the game. So you have to go to OOCSpurs.com, become a six man member because that's the page. Um, it's a private page, right? This is a members only stuff that we're doing over here at OOC. And for the six man membership, we're going to be on a live stream like this talking right now. So it'll be me and the guys and we'll be watching the game reacting along with you guys. So that's where you guys can get the link for that at OOCSpurs.com for upcoming games. But we are going to do post games for... Uh, post game reactions for other teams that are not Spurs. All right. So we're planning that too. So we're probably going to cover that Laker Clipper game and just do a post game to that. But the watch parties are going to be for Spurs nation here in the beginning of, uh, of the return to Orlando. Kelsey, okay, do we have any more questions? BS film room live. Yeah. You Chin. Yeah. I'm sorry. You Chin. If I missed, pronounce that name but if we have to beat the zone are three-point shooters such as brandon marco more likely to play at the time great question uh you chen uh yes i would i would say yes um we talked about it a little bit during this film room uh to beat the zone this is the type of player that i put on the floor when when i'm coaching i need players who are smart who can make good decisions because zones all they do is shift from one side to the left, to the next, one side to the next. They're not guarding you. You know, they're not putting all this pressure on you, which means that you have space between you and the player and you got to use pass fakes. You got to be smart to, to beat a zone. So, um, a lot of, a lot of times on the other end, on the end of that smartness on that smart pass is an open shot against a zone. Usually when that person makes a smart pass fake one way and then hits a skip pass, on the, to the other side of the court and that guy is catching that ball usually it's wide open so that's why you need shooters on the floor all right so i need guys who can be smart i need guys who can uh take good shots and knock them down and i need guys who can be active on the offensive glass all right great question you you chen yeah great question so for more hashtag bs spurs bs film room live let me see um this one comes from quattro cinco how many games can Spurs win without messing with draft seating if they missed the playoffs? I believe that the seating is frozen unless they make the playoffs. So if they make the playoffs, I think their pick probably falls from 11, which is a great pick, man. I mean, that's a good pick. It's a really good pick. I'm not mad if we don't make the playoffs. I mean, without LaMarcus, the whole COVID asterisk on everything, <clears throat> you know, I, I don't, I, I'm not going to be mad. If the Spurs playoff streak ended this year, I won't. I, it does not matter one percent to me. Those type of statistics or statistics or whatever. So that's a good draft pick if we can keep it. Um, all right, let's see. 
who is next? I saw a couple more in here. Saw a couple more. Okay, here we go. This one comes from Chris Besaw. Uh, do you think Pop will treat the final eight games like he does normally treats the playoffs? No, no. I, I mean, there, there was a report from Woj that said that all the teams that were not in the playoffs that were fighting for playoff positions positioning that none of them were going to treat this serious and that they were all going to treat it like an extended summer league. So if we're going to treat this like an extended summer league, it makes sense why we got Tyler Zeller. I talked about this on OOC with the guys over there. Um, and the and project Spurs put out a report as well on Tyler Zeller um, coming to the Spurs. But uh, I don't know if y'all remember, but last summer, Thomas Robinson uh, was on our summer league team. And he's just that vet that needs to teach these young guys how to be pros and how to be a guy on the floor that doesn't need the ball but can be a, a vocal leader. I think that's what we did with Tyler Zeller. So I think the Spurs are going to shut down DeMar. DeMar's going to shut down himself. It's going to be one of those. Um, and a lot of these young guys are going to get run. Um, Drew Banks, Chemezi, Quinn, uh, Quindary. Those are our, our, our contracts that are going to be up uh, for our – our two way guys and whatnot. And then Bryn Forbes is, I don't see, I don't know. Bryn Forbes is going to be a free agent. Jakob's going to be a free agent. It's a lot of risk. There's a lot of risk involved. And you guys are seeing that right now with a lot of players saying that they don't want to play. Um, some of them for one reason or another, but like Davis Bertans is like, nah, it's just not worth me getting injured again. Cause he's already had two injuries again to lose money. So no, no, I, I don't think, I don't think Pop is going to treat it like that either. I, I doubt if any of them do, the coaches. They know the scenario. They all want to win. They're all going to be competitive. Um, but the Spurs aren't going to risk anything, right? We're, they're smarter than that. Um, all right, guys. Well, man, we're on for almost an hour. Thank you. I hope this helped, you know, some of your expectations for the Spurs when they go in and play the Kings. We know what we got to do. We know what we've seen in this game. We know who can get hot. We know that we're going to see a man-to-man -man defense look from, from Sacramento. We're going to see them go zone as well. So um, those are some of the things we have to do. Didn't really go over some of their sets. Didn't have time for all that. But if you like this video, please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please share it. Appreciate you guys. I'm close to 700 subscribers, and I'm super excited. Um, this film room is powered by ProjectSpurs.com. Uh, thank you guys for jumping in the chat room. Go back and read all of this. Um, thank you guys. Appreciate it so much. Go Spurs go. The next uh, <coughs> film room that I'm going to do is going to be on who do we play second? Memphis. All right, so ooh. We'll go back and look at those games versus Memphis and see what happened there. They kind of kicked our tail two or three times this season. So um, hope you enjoyed this scouting report film room and go Spurs go.